Hello, hello everyone! Welcome to the latest edition of R&R. Okay, hindi po ito interview conversation yan. So, magkakumpit kami ng daldalan. Pero, let me just apologize kung medyo masyado ako madaldal more than usual last time kasi pagod na pagod yung ka-host ko dahil nagdoble kara. Pero kahit nagdoble kara, <laughs> napakagandang analysis na five episodes ang ginawa natin sa isang oras. Kaya believe na believe ako sa sarili namin. Thank you so much for uh-huh. some support and thank you of course to my special co-host co-anchor na si Secretary Ronald Diamas ex-secretary. Salamat Sir X. Kamusta ka naman diyan Sir X? Co-anchor pala ako. Akala ko oh, ano, 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 dito eh sabit kaya small R. Ayun, <laughs> ikaw yung real big R ako yung official lang na big R. Ayun. Kamusta ang pan mo? Kamusta ang Valentine's mo? Valentine's Day sa Solid North. Solid North at gusto natin makinig sa minamahal natin presidente bago tayo pumunta sa mga more, most seryosong issue. Dito muna tayo sa video na pinalabas ng ating minamahal na Pangulo na nagbe-bench press, na nag-abdominal <laughs> exercise, na may rock star music and meron, meron advice sa mga singles dyan na self-love, love yourself. Anong uh, Meron pa sila na... kayo ni Nicole eh. Meron pa sila kayo ni First Lady. Nakita mo yun? Ay, hindi ko. Ka... Parang mas marites kasi. Answering questions. Uh, answering questions about their lives. No? Aba, mas... <laughs> Pero believe ako dun sa nag-wait siya na abdominal exercise na mga ganyan. Uh, uh, so Sir Ronald, what's the uh, subtext here? What are the uh, subtext here? Hi ma. <laughs> what's the subtext here? <laughs> Alam na natin yung subtext. Mukhang continuation nung call mo eh. Fentanyl uh, narrative. No? Mukhang continuation niya nun eh. No? Pinapakita yes, to niya, sports, no? To fentanyl. Oh, oh. Pinapakita niya na if I were an addict, baka hindi ko kayang gawin ito mga to, no? Dapat uh, devastated yung aking katawan, di ba? O, oh, di ba? Oh, so, tingin ko continuing narrative yan. No? Alam mo naman eh, si, si, si President Bongbong Marcos ay, uh, co- ay conflict averse. So, at most siya ay passive aggressive. Kaya, <laughs> Kaya ito yung ganyang ginagawa, di ba? Pero ano kung ano, tayo, active gyming. Passive aggressive, oh. pero active yung pagkano niya. <laughs> ano kung tayo tatalungin, tayo aawayin, eh talagang aggressive tayo. Pero pero si BBM, eh mukhang kwan. Mga puro indirect, di ba? Yung kanyang mga patira, no? no? Ano mga ano mga sinasabi mo, no? No? <laughs> kaya, kaya tingin ko related pa yan doon, doon sa away. No. This Pero is balak din niya, way. balak oh, din niya oh, oh. humanize ng konti yung kanyang uh, presidency. Paano may kasabayan eh, yung uh, tandem nila ni First Lady na pinag-uusapan nila yung oh, kanilang... Hindi ko nakita uh, yun eh, paki-explain nga. Buhay, no? na, sinasagot nila na patay na patay daw si BBM sa kanya, sabi ni First Lady. No, patay na patay. So, parang ah, uh, humanize nila yung kanilang relasyon, no? Ah, uh, sinasagot nila yung mga banat sa kanila indirectly, 'di ba? Indirectly, no? <laughs> so, you think na parang that's the way of saying, wait, kung may nagko-nagko-coke diyan, hindi makakabuhits ng ganun. Ngayon naman, tingnan natin yung kabila, yung mga fentanyl lifestyle. You think, natin mo ba, may, may, may panglaban si Digong dyan? Baka yung next ni Digong, naka-motorbike siya siguro, no? Tapos naka-shades. Tapos sasabihin niya, ano, magda-drug, papunta na ako sa drug test. Mahirap, dahil... <laughs> mahirap, nadadapa na nga, eh, habang naglalakad, di ba? Dinala sa ospital, di ba? So, baka mahirapan na magkwan din siya, bench press, no? Uh, baka, <laughs> unless tutulungan mo, big R, no? Tulungan mo, paano magkwan? Mag-shadow boxing. No? <laughs> yeah, pero in fairness, ang ganda ng bike ni Tatay Digong, di ba BMW? Marami, marami. Pero maganda rin yung mga baril niya. Sabi nga ng Rappler, mahigit uh, 350 na baril. Maganda rin yun, no? Tsaka... Yung batalyon yun na 350. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Lang. This is coming from Mr. AK-47. Just to be clear. Ay, ako, ako, konti lang. Tsaka... <laughs> sa akin, Same lahat topic regist- ka na, Ronald. Ah. Mr. Ah, AK-47. That's akin, that's akin registered. No? Tsaka <laughs> AK-47 is still the best. And cheapest. No? And cheapest yan. Hindi kaya katulad ng mga barilin. M-16. Ni, ni M-16. President Duterte. No? M-16. <laughs> Alam yung kanta na M-16, di ba? Meron tayo M-16. <laughs> 
Uy, uh, medyo mag-segue tayo ng konti. Ako medyo marunong ako sa uh, semi-automatic. Hindi ako, actually, mas magaling ako sa semi-automatic kaysa yung ano lang, uh, uh, handgun lang. Uh, 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 just advice, since both tayo legit. <laughs> Anong alam mo sa mga barrel? Anong mga mas magagandang barrel dyan? Na legit? Depende, depende kasi kung saan kahiyang eh. Halimbawa, uh, sa akin, mas gusto ko 45 at saka 40 caliber. No? Yung, uh, kumbaga... Uh, malakas yung stopping power, no? Eh pero kung uh, depende kung saan kahiyang eh, kung saan uh, maganda yung pulso mo, no? Uh, yung iba kasi mas gusto 9mm. Si Pinoy ang gusto niya 9mm na Glock, no? Yun yung uh, Ah, yeah, Glock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yun yung sa Counter Strike na maliit. Gusto niya ron, no? Pero yung mas younger ang gamit ko ay uh, CZ 75, no? Uh, isang compact CZ na hindi nagja-jam. Sa akin nung uh, nung uh, in my 20s yung the best gun para sa akin no na CZ na eventually naging Beretta no paano yung Luger types maganda rin eh Italian may mga barrel Italian, no? yung Beretta 92F mm. Italian Pero, ba Spanish ano yan well uh, Italian yun Italian no yung Spanish, Spanish yung Mussolini ang dating niya sa akin yung, yung, Mussolini, yung Italian yung Bersa no Ah, correct, correct, uh, correct, 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 correct. Pero, nice, nice. Kaya nga depende sa pan mo, sa pulso mo. Mas gusto ko yung uh, 45 or tsaka 40 caliber dahil mas mataas yung stopping power niya. Tapos high cap na rin siya. Ibig sabihin, uh, 15 shooter na rin siya yung bala. Dati kasi yung problema sa 45, konti lang yung bala, 7 lang. 7 plus 1. Ah, so so, ngayon yung lagyanan, mas marami. Yun, yung high cap, marami na rin. Uh-huh. No? 14, uh, 15 na... Uh, so, doble. Doble. Oh, yun. Oh, 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 wow. Medyo makapal lang yung hawakan. No? Tsaka very Tsaka stable. Yun. Dahil uh, pag mabigat kasi yung barrel, very stable. Eh. Pag, uh, pag magaan, minsan malakas yung sipa. Kaya... And, pero what's with the AK-47 na parang gun of choice pa rin siya? Especially sa mga third world countries, di ba? Middle. Uh, uh, yeah, una yeah. ay uh, madali siyang linisin, madali yung maintenance, no? Tapos ah, pumuputok siya kahit halimbawa na sa tubig o nasa kahit ah, punong-puno ng putik. So very versatile siya. Yung ah, yung M16 kasi, 'di ba, pag ah, pag tumama sa isang ah, kahoy, at least nakagad eh, yung ah, AK mas diretso eh. Tsaka tsaka malaki yung AK eh. Parang para siyang M14 yung bala. Kaya nga pag naririnig mo yung putok ng M16 tsaka M tsaka AK, parang yung isa parang ah, pusikat, yung isa parang tiger. <laughs> Roaring, roaring, isa-isa, oh, isa, diba? miaw lang, miaw oh, lang. Oo, yan, yan, yan. At saka yung tagos pero, niya, no? Pero Malakas kung pangkong ka naman eh, Big R, parang ikaw mas lover ka, hindi ka fighter. Kaya... Ayan na naman tayo eh. Hanggang <laughs> MMA lang tayo. Hand-to-hand <laughs> combat lang ako. Oo, oh, oh, kaya pero, chill ka lang eh. Nagka-taekwondo ka yata dati eh. <laughs> Nagka-craft maga ka. Kasi oh, nagka-taekwondo ka yata eh, no? Nagka-craft maga. Si Karan ako eh. Si Karan kami sa trade union eh. Yeah. Street fighting, pinaghalong uh, karate, pinaghalong uh, taekwondo, judo, pero basically street fighting. No, yun ang tinuturo namin sa mga workers noon eh, para sa mga welga. Lalo na nung martial law. Oh, Ronald, matretag na naman tayo ni Madam. <laughs> nung martial law kasi, ang hirap sa mga welga, hindi ka pwede magdala ng weapons, huhulihin ka ng mga pulis, ilulusubin ka ng mga scabs, eh, mga iskirol, saka mga goons. You have to learn to protect yourself. Kaya minsan ginagamit namin mga homemade eh. yung uh, yung uh, medyas, lalagyan mo ng bato, tsaka buhangin, tapos itatali mo parang black jack na yon eh. Tapos pagdating ng mga pulis, sa metro kom, tatanggalin mo na yung uh, bato tsaka yung uh, buhangin, medyas na uli. Hindi ka naman pwedeng hulihin ang illegal possession of a medyas, di ba? So yun yung so, Molotov niyo, yun yung version niya ng so, Molotov. Oh, so so meron ka mga homemade na pwedeng hindi ka hulihin, no? Ganyan. Yung mga marami kami niyan nung uh, mga strikes. Parang kasi no martial law, daming welga. Ay, wala nang welga eh. Parang wala na ako nakikita nang may welga ngayon eh, no? <laughs> Kaya Ronald, di ka believe sa mga guns ni BBM kasi mahilig ka sa totoong guns. <laughs> ito, balikan ah. natin ito si si BBM. Uh, ako kasi, sabi ko, yun yung parating napansin kong difference kay BBM. Yung pagka-populist niya is very different from Digong. Not only na mas posh siya na Manila Polo Club version <laughs> ng yes. populist. But also, yung 
yung nakikiride siya sa pop culture in ways that Digong never did, 'di ba? Like tignan mo yung latest video niya for instance, kasama diyan mga sa sa ano, sa buwan ng mga lovers kanon, alaga na sa ritas andun yung picture na lahat ng mga artista nag break up over the past six months to one year. Yung meron silang map, map I, I call it pa cute pa cute populism, 'di ba? Meron siyang ganun, eh, parang andun yung signature ni Paul Seriano na ganun. Anong basa mo dun sa ganin style ni BBM na pa cute? Kasi Remember Ronald, yung Paul Sasha survey ng February and January 2022, seven out of ten Gen Zs like BBM. Uh, I think umabot pa sa 80% almost. So of all the demographics, pinakabenta si BBM sa mga pinakabata, 18 to 24. So sobrang Di lakas ng dating niya. So basa ko... Di ko alam kung, yeah. ko alam kung populism ang tawag doon eh. Paano targeted kasi niya? Oh, pakutism. The Gen Z at saka uh, part ng millennials. Yun talaga ang tinatarget niya. Kaya nga yung mga dadalo siya ng Coldplay, di ba? ng concert. No? Uh, ganun yung kanyang target. Yung masang nakikita kong may pagka-populist si Tulfo. Eh. Di ba? Yung tutulungan ko kayo. No? Isumbong kay Tulfo. No? Yung, uh, siya yung mas ganun eh. Kung ano yung mga, mga popular issues sa mga DNA. No, mas hindi mas hindi yung uh, generation Z eh. No, mas uh, DNA yung class, mas class, no? mas class, mas class, class, oh, class uh, rather than identity. Ganda no? na eh, hindi ko sigurado kung populist yung uh, strategy ni BBM. That's mas identity yung kanyang target eh. Si Tulpo mas uh, yung masa eh, no? Mas mas yung masa yung kanyang target. Kaya yung classic na populism no? na na ang ginagamit niya. A- ako rin uh, ang 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 point ko doon is parang I call it posh populism or paku populism. <laughs> so I'll give you a very good example. Ibang the, klase populism 'yan. <laughs> no, I mean, look at the look at uh look at the most famous populist today in the world is a guy who's just a few age older than me, si Bukele ng El Salvador. And yung ginagawa niyang Bitcoin, yung national mm-hmm. currency niya, yung mga ganun. Yung pa-cool effect na ganun. Yes. Oh. Sa tingin ko, may kinala... Parang mm. isa, isa false multiplier sa populism eh. Yung pa-cool effect niya. Mm-hmm. Posible eh. Magandang pag-aralan niya, no? Dahil uh, uh, hindi naman hindi naman isang version lang ang populism eh. Depende sa target audience mo eh. Diba? Lalo na sa Pilipinas, uh, 60% ng ating uh, populasyon, ng ating voters ay mga kabataan. No? <laughs> kaya <laughs> kaya hindi lang uh, kwan, hindi lang siya class related. Uh, pwedeng identity related din siya. Demographic no? related kasi ang ang target yeah. mo diyan regardless of class whether A, B, C ka or D and E, hmm. kung cool ka and all. I'll give you another example. So Bukele is the young self-described coolest dictator in the world. Kung titingnan mo yung Twitter account ni Bukele, <laughs> coolest dictator. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nakalagay diyan in Espanyol ah, like uh, uh, like coolest dictator El Mundial something like that, right? Uh, uh, Sobrang self talagang self-styled, no? Uh, But I'll give you another example. The person who's about to be the president of the third largest democracy in the world and the biggest ASEAN country, Indonesia, Prabowo mm. Subianto. Yes. Alam natin si Prabowo Subianto na nakatawa tong taon na to. Ito yung son-in-law ni Suharto at ito yung dating sobrang questionable na general accused of massive human rights violation, mga disaparasidos, yung mga nangyari mm. sa East Timor. Pero tignan mo yung latest na ginawa niya. Parang ano siya, cute uh, lolo, parang cuddly grandpa pa anime siya, TikTok, TikTok siya, sayo, sayo siya. So, there was an analysis recently by The Economist about itong Prabowo Subianto na ang benta-benta niya sa mga not millennials. Kasi mga millennials, naalala pa nila yung 1990s, eh, yung East Timor, yung human rights violation. Pero Gen, Gen Z, benta-benta sa kanila. There are like these animations of him, uh, cute na ganyan-ganyan lang si Prabowo, Prabowo, parang like a cute old man, may anime, ganyan bentang benta siya like 80% yata ng mga kabataan sa Indonesia may gusto sa kanya across all classes ah dating ABC sa Jakarta, Jog Jakarta, yung mga big cities. So sa tingin ko related lahat yan eh. It's not your digong class, demagogic, left wing, right wing. It's a different kind of a pa cool, relatable, pop culture, populism na may softer version like BBM my more self-styled version like Bukele. And then there's like a shameless version of Prabowo Sobianto. Total reinvention. I, would, I mean, I think the Indonesian elections this this week, the, the uh, Valentine's Day yeah, yeah. elections, will be the first TikTok elections. Ang lakas ng effect ng TikTok dito sa latest elections sa Indonesia. And Gen- pero pero nat- natuturin sila kay Widodo, no? Dahil uh, uh, Joko, very, very popular din si Widodo across, across classes, di ba? 
kahit ngayon na patapos na yung kanyang term, di ba? Very popular pa rin siya. Pero mo duma dumadalo sa party congress eh, naka-motorsiklo. Ayun mo 'yun. <laughs> di ba? Oh, cool din eh, di ba? Kaya natututo na yung mga leaders eh, whether authoritarian, whether dikt dictatorial, no? Whether uh, uh anong ka reformist ah, or even reformist natututo yeah. to na no uh, kaya dapat yung mga reformist dito matuto ng uh, ng uh, aspect ng populism no? <laughs> is populism the only game in town the reason i'm going to ask you secretary Leon, is you serve as political advisor of pinoy and from my understanding even pinoy to a certain degree dabbled in populism not demagoguery but populism mm. yung yung idea na you know i'll just fight against corruption and lahat ng problema natin more or less masolve i mean i find that pretty a populist standing i i don't find it a technical well to some to some extent to some degree, no? diba? Nag populist pa siya. pero pero his presidency is not like that eh yung presidency niya is more modernist eh. more modern eh no ayun yung uh, siguro kung uh, ginamit niya yung populism during his presidency baka iba yung resulta eh diba yung uh, ayun niya lang epal eh ayun niya lang epal ayun niya lang nagbisado uh, nagpapa cute no medyo may ganun siyang reaction eh iba nung kampanya na yung uh, talagang ginamit niya yung corruption dahil nga yung pinanggalingan mong gobyerno si Arroyo eh no si Arroyo kaya uh, partly dinikit niya doon yung anti-corruption struggle niya pero nung presidente siya he was more a modernist eh no uh, medyo kwenta eh uh, umiiwas siya doon sa at least yung populism mas know it no yun yung uh, iniiwasan niya kaya uh, uh, halimbawa yung kanyang uh, kandidato no could have been uh, could, might have been better off sa election kung ginawa ni ni Pinoy yung uh, halimbawa yung ginawa ni Digong di ba tindripli na yung sahod ng mga sundalo at saka ng mga pulis ayaw niya ni pinopost siyang kay Pinoy eh ayaw niya na eh dahil posibleng magkaroon ng fiscal problems yung ibibigay yung uh, pera ng SSS para sa mga seniors no uh, do doblehin titriplihin yung benefits ang tinitingnan ni Pinoy ay yung uh, yung sustainability eh ng mga institusyon na yan. So in in maraming pagkakataon umiwas siya dun sa populist style na oy bigay lahat, bahala na yung susunod, no? Ah uh, konong konong wants ng tao ibigay sa kanila. No? Yun yung uh, uh, foundation ng populism eh. No? Wala ka na, wala ka na masyadong pakialam eh. <laughs> Better sustainable yan o hindi. Ang mahalaga, popular ka panalo ka at yung successor mo or yung inyong gusto mong continuity ay magpapatuloy no medyo ayaw ni Pinoy niyan eh yeah um, ako ang, ang approach ko diyan no in a scholarly fashion is yung varieties of populism so digong is the more fully demagogic populist diba hindi lang yung style niya ng pananalita hindi lang yung kampanya niya when naging presidential tesha he really engaged dun sa pinaka populist na penal populist talagang punisher ganun ganun Uh, I think sila Jokowi and Aquino, I'll put them in the same category of major pop populists mm -hmm. when they were running for office, yung, yung electoral positioning nila. But once they were in office actually, they were much more standard, modernist, reformist kinds of leaders. Yun ang, so hindi sila full-fledged. I would call them instrumentalist populists. Diba? <laughs> Partial lang sila. Huh. And because yun ang gusto ng, let's be honest, Uh, mababoard ang tao sa'yo if you just give technocratic arguments. Like Gibo, I think, was the best candidate for a technocratic argument, right? I'm No offense to to Pinoy, but if you look at the debates in 2010, Gibo was like head and shoulders above everyone else. He knew the numbers ilan, 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 ilan per head yung per capita police natin. Diba when he was asked about law and order, grabe, he would give you all of this data and all of that. Hindi gusto ng tao yan. Gusto ng tao yung parang kind of a bumper sticker kind of solution and all. So with all due respect to President Aquino, I think he was a bit populist during his election campaigning strategy, but not when he was the president. But Digong was true and true, full-fledged, true and true. He was really a populist, just like Trump, just like Bolsonaro. Well, They, go, yeah. Even before Digong, and just Arab. Arab was also a populist. Of course, Arab is like classic yeah. populist. Even that, the parang yeah. like, yeah, uh -huh. But but because na, yeah. na hindi na hindi mga matay tao, no, walang EJK, no. <laughs> yeah, I imagine next level because uh -huh. si Digong, eh. yeah, uh -huh. the scary level si Digong, uh -huh. you're right. I mean, 
in the case of Trump, siguro not inside US, pero yung mga gyera na ginagawa nila abroad or muntik na nangyari in a way. Diba? Deadly populism din sila in a way yung mga right-wing populist. If not at home, they're gonna wage wars abroad. Swerte lang tayo, walang nuclear weapons si Digong. Diba may nag-joke na, kuti Duterte na have nukes kasi he would be scarier than Trump. May nagsabi ng ganun, di ba? Na wala tayong pangsugot sa ibang bansa. Ibang usapan na siguro, sinugod na natin yung Saba or something like that. To hey, yung latest nga niya, na outburst, sabi niya, uubusin niya, imamasakran niya yung ICC na magsaserve ng warrant, di ba? Oh, di ba, tignan mo yung mindset. Buti nga wala siya <laughs> nuclear weapon, di ba? Baka mag-brinkmanship siya ala Putin, di ba? He will threaten that. Uh, Now, last to this episode, I just want to ask you this thing. I know it's a bit out of nowhere, but would you agree na realistically, no, at the stage of political development we are, at the stage of political culture we have, someone like Jokowi perhaps is the best we could have for the Philippines for now. Don't you think so? I think para masyado maaga to have a Macron-like or Obama-like kind of president. But someone like Jokowi na hindi super eloquent, super technocratic, may may instinct for populism, may instinct for reform, magaling maglaro, di ba? He even make Prabo, his defense secretary, medyo may pagka good Machiavellian. Do you think that that's reasonably the best version of a president we can hope for under the current circumstances? Not ideally, not normative. I know a lot of criticisms about Jokowi. Daming galit sa kanya, daming disappointed sa kanya. Medyo trapo din siya, yung anak niya ngayon ang ginawa ng vice president kay Prabo. I can go on and on about the criticism. But realistically, Indonesia has come very far over the past 10 years under Jokowi. I think Indonesia uh, has done very well under Jokowi, even if Jokowi has been far from perfect. And I think realistically, they're very similar to Indonesia in terms of level of development and all. Don't you think that's yun the sustainable form of reformist leadership that we can hope for? Well, I don't want to call the best. No? Ang mas ko nga, ito yung viable. I just want to call it viable. Baka ito yung viable sa isang bansang katulad natin na ganito yung level ng electorate. No? Ganito yung, uh, ganito yung uh, weaknesses ng political system. Ganito yung weaknesses ng political leadership, no? ng political culture. Baka, siya yung, uh, baka ganyang style yung, uh, yung uh, uh, best of all worlds. No? <laughs> yun, yung, yun yung mangyayari. Dahil may Or least, siyang... least worst of all worlds. Oh, may kaunti siyang reformist uh, stature. Meron siyang uh, populist uh, stature, may diba? Uh, pero medyo medyo may pagka strong leader din siya, may pagka Machiavellian, 'di ba? Yung hindi mo hindi rin siya papahuli ng buhay dito sa mga trapo natin, no? Pwede niyang laruin yung mga trapo, pero at the same time, pwede niyang ka- kausapin yung progressive movement, 'di ba? Pwede niyang kausapin ang civil society. Baka yes, tama yung sabi mo na baka yung level natin ay katulad ng level ng Indonesia no ah uh, ganung klase. Ah uh, pwede rin na siya yung maging uh, kumadrona of something better, no? Ibig sabihin pwede rin yung kanyang leadership, yung ganyang klasing uh, makukuha nating bagong uh, political leader should be the the strong leader na pwedeng i-level yung playing field para mas maging uh, sustainable yung modernity at saka reforms, no? Mas ganun pa ang tingin ko eh. No, kailangan mo handling yung mga dynasties, yung mga warlords, yung mga traditional politicians. Pero at the same time, saan mo dadalhin? Ano yung direction? Yun yung problema na hindi ko nakikita sa present crop of leaders natin. Sino yung gagawa niyan na may enough uh, strength, uh, pragmatism, uh, uh, ruthlessness, no? For lack of a better term, pero merong reformist vision. No? Yun yung yun yung siguro hinahanap ko na na transitional or for lack of again yeah, exactly. for better yeah, transitional, term, transitional yeah. leader to something better to something more modern more reform oriented more social welfare type of uh, leadership at saka vision para sa ating bansa no uh, Rona, uh, yun yung problema naman kay 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 Jokowi eh. parang after ng kanyang term no saan pupunta baka bumalik eh baka bumalik sa Suharto type na na, na na leadership sa Suharto type na na government with new trappings pero the same substance pero the same substance no uh, yun siguro yung kaibahan uh, pwedeng magkaroon tayo ng ganyang style of leader pero dapat papunta to something better no hindi babalik doon sa nakaraan hindi babalik sana sana yun yung sustainability na hinahanap ko I agree. I agree. Uh, Ronald, one last question related dito. 
Indonesia allows for re-election and up to 10 years of continuous mm. presidency. Ang basa ko kasi is six years is too long for a bad president. Yeah. But six years is also too short for a good president. I mean, who who knows if Ramos had more than one term? No? Or even Pinoy, some would say, had more than one term. Maybe the, the Philippines would have been on a totally different trajectory. Granted, na kay Jokowi, there's a big threat under Prabowo, there'll be relapse. All the reformacy reforms will go away. Uh, but I think a good president, or at least Jokowi level, just above mediocre, deserves two terms, right? And potentially up to 10 years. Well, definitely. Kung ka sa first term, then manalo ka ng second term. Pero kung hindi ka well, magaling, then you will not be voted into power anymore. Well, diba? Definitely. Ang, ang purpose naman yung one term na yan ay mapigilan yung mga authoritarian, uh, dictatorial leaders no? na, na manalo. No? Na... na Kanya eh, reaction yan dun sa Marcos dictatorship, no? Medyo matagal na yung uh, yung panahon na yan, kaya baka pwedeng pagdebatihan kung kinakailangan ng baguhin. Ang problema lang naman natin, that will entail charter change. Yun yung problema. At pag sino mo naman na charter change, kung sino yung dominant sa Senate at saka sa Congress, yun yung may plen plenary powers to change everything. Okay lang sana kung halimbawa, meron kang modernist black within Congress at saka Senate, na i-assure na hindi tayo magdi-deteriorate. Yung political system na gagawin mo ay hindi magdi-deteriorate. Diba? Yun lang naman yung problema. Eh. No? Ang problema, hindi ko nakikita yung, yung, yung reformist block na yan within Congress or within Senate. You have one or two senators na reformist. You have one, two, three or four congressmen out of 315 na reformist. So, ibig sabihin, pag binuksan yung charter para dyan sa proposal na pinag-uusapan natin na magkaroon ng at least two terms, no? yung presidente, eh, eh, baka the worst might happen. Yun yung problema. Yun yung problema lang na, na pag binuksan mo yan. No? Again, Parang, kind of worms, uh, Pandora's box. Yes. Uh, yes no? Let me just Alimbawa, add... Ito, hmm. Nakakatawa itong si Digong eh. Diba, nung presidente siya, gusto niya baguhin yung constitution to shift to a federal system. Nung hindi na siya presidente, anti-charter change siya. Dahil maganda daw yung constitution, dapat baguhin. No? Pero, two weeks ago, sabi niya, ay uh, uh, magsisisid na sila. Which is worse than changing the the constitution. Dahil, para ka ikaw makapagsisid, kailangan mo ng cha-cha. You cannot secede without changing the constitution. Hindi <laughs> ko alam kung na-realize na yun eh. So, uh, in almost the same breath na binanata niya yung uh, charter change, ay nag-propose siya ng charter change with this secession project. Which... Secession can only happen in a charter change con us. No? <laughs> Doon lang pwede mangyari yung secession mo. No? Which uh, just proves na hindi ito uh, madman theory. Madman lang nangyayari uh, ngayon. Uh, yung wala na yung theory. Mad uh, Max. Sorry, Mad uh, Max theory. Uh, 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 last one, I just want to add to this. No, Again, I, I really like this discussion kasi dito lumalabas na para sa tayo, we're, we're, we're pragmatic idealists. Diba? As much as we're idealists, we also want pragmatic idealism. Um, What is the threshold of risk we're willing to accept in order to push for some much needed uh reform? Uh, I mean, Sabi mo eh, ang problema is whenever we have constitutional change or whatever, ang problema kung trapo yung mga in charge, I mean, you cannot fix a problem if the fixer is the problem. But at some point, Ronald, hindi naman tayo po pwede umasa forever na manalo yung mga progressives majority. So, what is the threshold of acceptability? Because I'm defining yung 2028 eh. No? Hmm. Dahil definitely, uh, six years ka with Duterte. Diba? Six years ka with Duterte. Tapos namal, nanalo o nakabalik yung mga Marcoses, no? Yung first year ng Marcos, hindi ka sigurado eh, di ba? Nung first year ng Marcos, hindi ka sigurado kung anong ano yung ethos nitong Marcos na ito, no? Ah, uh, ito babalik ba tayo sa dictatorship, authoritarianism? Tayo ba ay uh, babalik sa cronyism, no, etc. So, ah, uh, yun yung pinag-aralan natin nitong nakaraang yung first one year ni ni BBM, no? Mukhang karamihan naman doon sa ating kinakatakutan, hindi nangyari. Diba? Mukhang wala namang drift pabalik sa dictatorship. Pero marami pa rin problema yung bansa. Hindi pa rin nare-resolve yung Dutertismo. No? Dutertismo is still alive. The, the daughter is the vice president. Diba? 
Tapos nakikita mo yung mga runner pa to be the next oh, president. Nakikita mo yung napakaraming recidivist element na naiiwan, di ba? Nakikita mo yung forces of reaction still holding sway in both legislative houses, di ba? Especially sa local government. So, medyo nakakatakot pa. Kaya sa akin defining yung 2028. Will the 2028 results uh, provide a reformist poll? Ako nga poll lang eh, uh, big R. No? May reformist poll ka ba? Magkakaroon ka ba ng uh, presidente na open sa reforms kahit hindi reformist? Magkakaroon ka ba ng Senate slate na hindi lang nag-iisa yung reformist? Or, or congressional slate na hindi lahat ay trapo? No? Magkakaroon ka ba ng, uh, ng, ng mas maraming magalong, mas maraming biko soto, mas maraming kakabagaw no? sa local government? So sa akin mahalaga yung 2028. Meron tayong uh, uh, five years para gawin yan. Para i-create yung conditions para dyan. No? Dapat lahat itayanan natin itong next five years. Next four to five years. Dapat itayanan natin lahat dyan. Or else, it will be a vicious cycle. Paulit-ulit ka. Meron kang Duterte, meron kang, uh, meron kang Marcos na hindi mo sigurado kung saan pupunta. Diba? So, and then Baste, naman, and then Sandro. O oh, sana man lang maka-create ka ng poll sa loob, no? Hindi ako umaasa na matatransform yung lipunan sa 2028. Ang inaasahan ko lang at least create a reformist poll. And within that reformist poll, a progressive poll, no? Yun yung uh, kumbaga yung last last productive 10 years ko, doon ko ilalagay, no? Ikaw ma- mahaba ka pa, meron ka pang 30 years eh. Kami, kami, 10 years na lang eh. <laughs> Mag-fundraising tayo, mag-stem cell ka para, para ng Enrile hanggang 100. So may 40 years ka pero, pa. Pero natutuwa ako eh. Dahil alimbawa, itong mga episode natin na ganito, no? yung episode uh, with uh, Politiscope, yung episode with Robbie Alampay, with Christian Esguera, may nakikilig sa atin eh. Ibig sabihin, hindi rin natin masasabi na, na walang-wala yung ating electorate. Walang-wala yung ating... Pop- Merong poll, lalo na ngayon, ngayon ako nagbabasa ng mga comment, merong growing base yung ating populasyon na nagiging critical, na nagsawa na dun sa cycle na pinag-uusapan natin. ba diba? Yung cycle ng uh, populism, ng dictatorship, ng traditional politician, ng corruption. Meron ng lumalaki. No? Na ngayon ko lang nakikita uli. Sana lumaki yan. Sana lumaki yan. Well, I mean, I can say, the very fact na matataas yung ganitong klaseng episode, yung mga nanonood, ibig sabihin merong ganong klaseng nakikinig. Diba? Yun yung, yeah, I mean, we're yun talking yung about millions of views. I mean, between me and Christian and, and your mm-hmm. other interviews, I mean, we're easily talking about 3, 4, 5, 6 million views, right? Uh, so, malaki yung... And it's not just number. Eh. Yung mga nakikinig sa atin, I'm, I'm 100% sure, a lot of them are people who should be listening to us. And I'm not saying this in a mayabang way. I'm saying this in a heartening way. Na mukhang may nakikinig sa atin. And I can see some of our ideas is echoing in the words of others. Although they don't give credit to us. Parang, hello, <laughs> kami ni Ronald nagsabi yan last week, di ba? Yan ang problema sa kultura natin. Eh. Wala man lang crediting or citation culture. Okay diba? na yun. Okay na yun. Pwede Basta, yan, pwede. Basta okay, so uh-huh. I think napahaba tong episode. Actually, I wanted to make it very short just to set the tone for the next episode. Gusto ko lang sana pag-usapan yung fentanyl and healthy lifestyle and Valentine's. <laughs> Napunta na kay Jokowi. But I really not want to talk about Jokowi because I think you and I, our analysis of Jokowi has a lot to do with how we understand where the Philippines can realistically go as much as we want progressive change. Now, in the next episode, let's talk about this very serious issue. Ang daming galit sa akin, sila sasod lahat, matak sa akin over the weekend. You must na- be doing something good. Self love ako ngayon kung <laughs> pinatulan, all right? Kung sila Saso, tsaka sila Banat Bay, tsaka si Maharli ka ang galit sa iyo. <laughs> well, si Banat Bay busy siya kay Boljack eh. Sila dalawa nag-aano sila. So, medyo may mga intersectionality nang yan. But but next episode pag-usapan natin this very important thing. SWS is showing crystal clear that vast majority of Filipinos want an ICC probe, which inevitably means that they may be open to at one point warrants of arrest. Again, this is connected to pinag-uusapan natin. 
Exactly. Hindi naman na, yung population natin ay medyo nag-evolve naman. Nag-evolve naman. And and hearteningly because I want to talk about the moral aspect of this. I know you, Ronald you're not the most, you know, religious person out there, but I think there's a moral vindication here in this kind of surveys that I'm looking at. So thank you very much uh Secretary Liamas for the 101 advice on AK47 on M16 and M14. I really enjoyed that and Jokowi politics. I really like it. Magandang discussion 'yan kasi hindi pwede yung kumpara lang natin sa sarili natin sa Amerika, sa mga puting bansa. Tingnan natin Indonesia, tingnan natin Malaysia, tingnan natin Latin America. I think mas relatable sa atin yung mga bansa na yan. Mas similar sa atin. Eh. There's so much we can learn from them. Salamat, Secretary Liamas. Okay. Thank you.